Hello, brethren, sisters. Hi. Bow your head with me, please. Let's pray. Let's pray. Bow your head. <laughs> Father, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, our Savior. You know, Lord, the more that we go through the scriptures together, Lord, the more I am aware of how incapable I am to serve you in the calling that you have, that you have called me to. And Lord, before you and before the many witnesses of the brethren, and, and unfortunately even the, my enemies, Lord, I am very incapable of doing what you have called me to do. So Lord, I go to you to get me out of the way that thou, O Lord, may speak unto these people, unto your church, unto your body, my God, our Savior, our Father, Lord Jesus Christ. Please give unto me, Lord, what is needed of you alone that what you have given me to give unto the brethren, the body of Christ, that you, Lord, may do it through me and not me myself, Lord. Oh, Lord. Please give me the ability needed to get the points across, to, to go through the scriptures with the brethren. And Lord, that the brethren will search the scriptures to see if these things be so, and that you give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and understanding hearts, that you give us wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and all skill and learning, Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. <clears throat> give me, get me out of this, Lord. <laughs> I, I can't do this. And I repent, Lord. My pride, my selfishness, my wickedness. And help us, Lord, to adhere unto the truth of your word. Guide us in the way, speak unto this congregation. And may your blessing, your mercy, grace, and kindness be upon those who have pity on the poor and who have had pity on the poor. May you bless them a thousandfold. And we ask this all, Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, in Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. Very quickly, I want to, i got to address something very quickly to, to you, Body of Christ, my brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. I'm not on my laptop that much. I am really, I'm really not. <coughs> I use my uh, <coughs> fancy schmancy cell phone quite often for like, you know, listening to videos and um, emails and stuff like that. I am rarely on my laptop except for this kind of stuff. Um, and I have, because I am rarely on my laptop, I don't get to see my Skype. And I had missed a privileged opportunity to share fellowship with beloved brethren. Brethren who are far greater than I am or will ever be. I was invited to join them and um, because I was not on my laptop, I missed such a privilege to be with such fine brethren. And those of you brethren who uh, I am referring to, please forgive me. I'm sorry. I repent of that. Uh, I, I got to try to be a little bit more active on my laptop in order to, um, to, um, to enjoy such privileges to be with such fine brethren far greater than I am or will ever be. Also, brethren, uh, do remember to keep in your prayers each other. Um, got to uh, straightway, brethren, to uh, 
ask you to keep in your prayers the beloved brother, my friend, Matthew Mellinson. Oh, what that sweet brother goes through. And those of you out there who mock that sweet brother, the Lord rebuke you. Please keep him in your prayers. Also, brethren, do keep in your prayers the beloved sweet Aaron Judge. Um, that young man, that fine young man, what he goes through. Also, uh, please keep in your prayers uh, the beloved Alexander Hartley, my dear, dear friend. Brother, may you be filled with the joy of the Lord. And also, too, for our brother Matthew Landau, make sure you keep him in your prayers. And also, uh, many, many other of the brethren, pray for one another. You know, those of you out there who um, suffer physical pain, my wife, <laughs> um, I sincerely wish sometimes, I really do, that the Lord our God, our Father, Jesus Christ, would lay upon me that suffering that you go through that you might have some respite for at least in an hour. You know, when it comes to uh, the beloved brother Matthew Mellinson, my, my dear friend, um, I, I really do. I do. I, I wish sometimes, often, it's like, oh, Lord, give, give me his stuff so he could have just one hour without pain, without physical suffering. Give to me what Brother Aaron Judge goes through so he can go and feast on what you have provided. I do often hope for that so that other brethren might, um, who are far better than I, may be able to rejoice in the Lord. And if it were possible, my beloved brethren, I would. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true, the real scriptures. Turn in your King James scriptures to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. We will be reading verses 8 on to verse 12. Go there in the scriptures. Follow me along. You are expected to follow me along in the scriptures. Okay? Got it? Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 8 on to verse 12. Now, backstory, he's talking about how about making reference to 1 Corinthians, uh, specifically... Um, especially, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay, that's the back story. Okay, but. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 8 on verse 12. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent. Though I did repent, for I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, 
that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. Very quickly, there are those cheap gracers out there who teach that lost people cannot experience or have godly sorrow. They like to make a distinction, like they can only have worldly sorrow if they're lost. Um, if the Lord is bringing you on to himself by grace, through faith, uh, yes, lost people can have godly sorrow. Okay? We're going to look at an example of that uh, quickly, but let's continue now. Let's continue. Verse 11. For behold, this selfsame thing, that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge. In all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Wherefore, though I wrote unto you, I did it not for his cause that had done the wrong, nor for his cause that suffered the wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. You know, when you get called out for your sin by the body of Christ, and I'm talking to the church of the living God, you might think at the moment that he's not your brother or your sister, or you might think ill of them. Okay? Whereas Paul says here uh, in the scriptures, the more I love, love you, the less I be loved. You know, if you're going to rebuke a brother or a sister who are in sin, you don't do it out of a spiteful attitude. Or it's like, aha! No, you do it out of love but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. No, so if, let me give you an example. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't say anything to you. I just let you go on. That's why these cheap gracer people, they don't, they don't love you. They don't love you. They say that only saved people can have godly sorrow, and that lost people cannot, because they're, they're not saved. And they say, well, here in context, yes, here in context, he is writing on to those who are saved. Yes, yes. But, go to Acts, Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, which the care Catholics uh, seem to think that the true gospel for today is found. No, no, no. Care Catholics do not understand rightly dividing the word of truth. But look at this. Acts chapter 2, verses 36 on to verse 40. Now, Pope Peter, <coughs> a little congestion. Peter gave a sermon here and cut them to the heart. And at this time in Acts chapter 2, number 1, there was no Gentiles present. There wasn't one Gentile there. And number 2, these Jews up until where we are going to read were not saved. They were not saved. Keep that in mind. We will be reading verses 36 on to verse 40. This is Peter speaking unto the Jewish people. Okay. Therefore, beginning at verse 36, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified both Lord and Christ. Verse 37. 
Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Men and brethren, what shall we do? They were not saved. They were not saved. They were all Jews, and they were not saved. This was the beginning of the current dispensation. It had to go on to the Jewish people first. It is to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile, okay? We're not going to get into that. But they were not yet saved, okay? They were not yet saved, okay? And the clear-cut mode of salvation was not given yet until it was given on to Paul, okay? This is the current dispensation, but it had to go to the Jew first and also to the Greek, okay? Okay? That's why you see differences in what Peter says in different chapters of the book of Acts, okay? But look at verse 36. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Now, were they pricked in their hearts just over what they had done? Or that they crucified the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Which one is it? Could it be a little bit of both? Perhaps. But verse 36 is like the branding iron. These, these Jews who Peter preached to were cut to the heart for what they did to God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. And then they asked him, Men and brethren, what shall we do? They knew that they were in trouble because, look at verse 36, See, these Jews who were not saved had godly sorrow for what they had done to the Lord. And see, these cheap gracers will try to teach you to have just sorrow for what you've done, but not that you have sinned against God. See, that's where true brokenness comes in. It's a good thing to feel sorry for what you've done. Of course, I'm not saying that. But more rather, that it was your sin, my sin, that put the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, on that cross. Personal accountability to the Lord. Get it? Let's continue. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, speaking unto the Jews, and to your children, and to all that are afar off. Making reference unto the Gentiles. But see, it's given to the Jew first. Okay, even Paul mentions that. In Romans chapter 1. Okay, let's continue. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Now see, we, we don't save ourselves. We are saved by grace through faith. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. There again, what was going on here? This was the current dispensation, but it had to go to the Jew first. And then to us, after the Jewish people rejected the gospel. On that, 
go to Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. Now, hold your place here in Acts chapter 7 and look at Acts chapter 2, verse 37, okay? Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Hinge this. Hold your place here in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 7. We will read verses 51 on to verse 54. Now, Stephen gives the whole rundown, gives a whole rundown onto these, onto these Jews who were accusing him. And he finally reached the point where he says, verse 51, cutting them to the heart. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them which shewed before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it? Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. Go back to Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Uh, Acts 7, verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Acts chapter 7, verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Cut to the heart. And let's read in Acts chapter 7, what they did. See, in Acts chapter 2, they were pricked. In Acts chapter 7 here, they were cut. They were cut. In Acts chapter 2, it led on to these Jews getting saved. In Acts chapter 7, it led on to the gospel officially going on to the Gentile to make the Jew jealous. This was already the time of the Gentiles, okay? It was an inevitability, okay? It's even prophesied, all right? But, Acts chapter 7, verses 55 on to verse 60 now. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord. See, look at verse 51, 52, and 53. Okay, look at it. Look at it. Okay? You talk about a rebuke, man. But see, now... Where was their godly sorrow? Where was their godly sorrow? See, again, in Acts chapter 2, the Jews up to the point of verse 37, where they got saved, okay, from then on, okay, they had godly sorrow. They weren't saved yet, but they had godly sorrow. These guys... When they were rebuked sharply, where was their godly sorrow? God was giving them the chance to be sorry 
for what they did unto him. <laughs> Obviously. But what did they do with it? They gnashed on him with, their, with his teeth. They gnashed on him with their teeth. They rejected it. They rejected it. It was there. But they were more offended by Stephen telling them the truth and then getting right to the heart of the matter. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Let's continue. From verse 58. Uh, let's reread verse 57 again. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out to the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. He died, obviously. Mm -hmm. Obviously. So you see godly sorrow working here in Acts chapter 2. And godly sorrow was the intent, obviously, of Stephen's rebuke. But they wouldn't take it. But they wouldn't take it. Don't ever buy this or fall for this. Only save people can have godly sorrow. Lost people can have it too. Okay? That's one of the things that the Lord bring, uses to break you of your self-righteousness. Okay? Do you get that so far? Okay. Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. We will be reading verses 5 on to verse 13 to close out the chapter. Okay? This is what Paul was referring to in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Okay? Basically, he was referring to probably the entirety of 1 Corinthians in and of itself, but right here especially. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 5 on to verse 13. Now, let's read 4 on to verse 13. Talking about the guy who was having relations with his father's wife. 1 Corinthians 5, verses 4 on to verse 13. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together and my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or with extortioners, or with idolaters. Then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company, if any man that is called a brother, be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one know not to eat. With such a one know not to eat. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without God judgeth. 
Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. If a brother or sister of the church of the living God is in sin, you are to break fellowship with them. You are to admonish them, yes. Warn them. But if they will not heed that warning, you are to have no fellowship with them. They may be ashamed, you know. You go find that on your own time, okay? Go to 1 Timothy now. And it says over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, very quickly, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 20. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 20. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning the faith, have made shipwreck, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. You know, in Romans chapter 1, let's go there. Romans chapter 1. <clears throat> Romans chapter 1, okay, where it says, Ah, uh, Verse 24 on to verse 26. Romans chapter 1, verses 24 on to verse 26. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. See, those of the church of the living God, when you commit sin and let sin rule over you, the Lord can give you over onto that. That it will destroy you. One of the worst things you could uh, have happen unto you, brothers and sisters, is the Lord giving you exactly what you want when it's not in accordance with His will. See, if you pray and ask for things that are according to his will, that's a good thing, right? But if you're in sin, living in sin, continuing in sin, justifying your sin, you're in a lot of danger. You're in a lot of danger. God, you, you, now your salvation, if you are truly saved and born again, again, you're not going to lose your salvation. You are sealed, okay? You're going to go to heaven. Your rewards aren't going to be that great, but you're going to go to heaven, uh, heaven when you die. But if you are of the church of the living God, and you are messing around with sin and justifying it, and going through the scriptures to try to justify it, you, you. Oh boy, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why these disgusting free gracers, <laughs> uh, cheap gracers, sicken me so much. <clears throat> they don't call you out. They call out, the, they try to 
call out the true members of the church of God because they are Christians, remember? But amongst themselves. Look, look at their comments. They condone the sins of these people. They don't confront them. They don't turn them on to the Lord through the scriptures. No. no. What's your attitude on sin? Church of the living God, what's your attitude on sin? If you, if you are continuing in sin, if you are in sin, you could be handed over to the devil. And he could wreck your life like there ain't no tomorrow, man. Sister. Is that what you want? Is that truly what you want? Go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. Verses 5 on to verse 11. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5, under verse 11. Now Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, is written for the Jewish people in the time of Jacob's trouble, specifically. Okay? Gives a rundown of things, which we already know today, which the Jewish people have rejected. And then they will realize that, oh boy, those King James Scripture believing Church of the Living God guys, they were telling us the truth all along. Whoa. Okay? That's why Hebrews is set up the way it is. But check this out. <clears throat> Hebrews 12, verses 5, on to verse 11. <clears throat> and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. <clears throat> For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Where's the chastisement? You call yourself a Christian. Where's your chastisement? You got a mouth full of dung. Where's your where's your chastisement? Playing video games? Hmm? Living the things of the world? Where's your chastisement? If you're of the church of the living God, it's there. But are you heeding? that are you aware it's like oh boy this is happening to me because of what i've done because of the sin i committed see people like to think that um that once you're saved that you will not get punished for anything that you do hi <laughs> uh, oh we don't have the time for me to go through with you all the times that I have been punished for the sins I have done as a saved man. And you of the Church of the Living God, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you don't, are you of the Church of the Living God? Hmm? We're saved. Those of the Church of the Living God, we're saved. We're going to heaven. We're sealed. Done. Don't worry about it, but your rewards and the life and testimony that you live outside, hmm? it can really be fouled up on you. Let's continue. Verse 9. Furthermore, we have had... Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father, capital F, 
of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days ch chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, circle that, circle that, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no, ch no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. This is for the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. But if you're going to sit there and say, well, Brad, that's not for us. Are you saved? Are you saved? Go to Revelation now. Revelation. Chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Now, very quickly... Thing to note about Revelation, uh, Revelation chapters one, on to verse three, is that it, the Lord is addressing these churches, these bodies of believers, not buildings. Don't get me started on that. Okay. Revelation four is the catching away. So we see here in Revelation. That what our Lord is talking about, these were individual bodies of believers, yet, yeah. yes, these also could be types of people out there, types of persons, you know, spirit, soul, and body, okay? We have to remember that. Because you see in Revelation chapter 4, come up hither, the very first verse, okay? That's the catching away. Okay? But let's read. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 7. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 7. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These, th these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and believe, and do the, <coughs> excuse me, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come on to thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, hates things. And yes, he hates some people. Check out Brother Alexander's, Alexander Hartley's uh, studies on that. And I wonder why some people didn't like that, huh? <laughs> Verse 7. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Your first love. Hello. What is your first love? The Lord Jesus Christ. God our Father. Nothing can come between you and the Lord Jesus Christ, our God, our Father. Your, our first love. 
not yourself, not your wife, not your children, not your job, not your habits, not your television, not your video games. No, 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 no. Your first love. Anything gets in the way of that. Because thou hast left thy first love. Now some people will like to make an argument about left. That they've left their thy first love. Do you realize those of you of the Church of the Living God who are in sin? Who are justifying sin? Who don't want to go to the Lord? And you know what you're doing. You have replaced sin over the Lord. You know, way the 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 idea of a scale, sin or me. Which one you gonna choose? Which one you gonna choose? Now we all sin. Yes, there is no such thing as sinless perfection. I'm going to link the sinless perfection video in this uh, video in the description box because I know these nitwit twits out there and I'm using Church of the Living God charity there when I say that uh, they're going to say, oh bro, you're preaching sinless perfection. You cheap gracers can go take a long walk off of a short pier. Maybe go put your head in some cold water for a while. Okay. Let's continue. Verses 18 on to verse 25 now in Revelation chapter 2. Eighteen on to verse 25 in Revelation chapter 2. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, Thyatira, write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Fine brass. Hey, brass isn't white, is it? Oh, no, really? I, I had to throw that in. Beg your pardon. Let's continue. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel. Jezebel was the wife of Ahab. Ahab or Ahaz. I get them too confused. Um, she is a type of the Roman Catholic Church. Remember that which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Oh, and in verse 20, we can tie in so many things about, beg your pardon, uh, about the uh, blessed cookie, the bale shape, excuse me, sun, S-U-N, shaped cookie, okay, fornication, okay, we can go into all wonderful, tasty rabbit trails about that, but we're not, okay? I just had to mention that. Verse 21. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication. Oh, beg your pardon. And she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I... Jesus is your home boy. He just loves everybody. Yeah. What do you do with this, hot shot? And I will kill her children with death. What do you do with that? You red word Christians. <laughs> red words only. Well, here in the Cambridge, they don't because Jesus is not on the earth at the time. Uh, that's why the words are not in red in the Cambridge uh, edition here. See? Okay. But, uh, yeah, okay. So look at verse 6 here in Revelation 2, where he says, which I also hate. 
And right there in verse 23, and I will kill her children with death. What do you do with that? Let's continue. And all the churches will know, shall know, excuse me, that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. What's your attitude on sin, Church of the Living God? What's your attitude on sin? Hmm? Well, see, here's, here's a problem that a lot of people seem to have. Go to Ecclesiastes. Go to Ecclesiastes now, chapter 7. No, chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verses 11 on to verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verses 11 on to verse 14. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, like drop dead right away. You know how Satan deceived Eve? Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that the day ye eat thereof, thou ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. They did die. Not right away, but they did die. Okay? Let's continue. Let's reread this. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner do evil an hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it will it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. Check this out. I love this verse. There is a vanity which is done upon the earth, that there be just men unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked. Let's read that part again. That there be just men unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked. Again, there be wicked men to whom it happeneth according to the work of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity. See, brethren, just because you don't get immediately punished for something as the Church of the Living God, doesn't mean that you ain't going to reap consequences later on. I've been saved for 12 years. And to this day, I still suffer consequences for things I did in my 20s. And I'm 46 years of age. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven when I die. But I'm still suffering consequences now for things I did. Way back then. You're not going to get away from the consequences. God can rescue you from consequences, yes. You can. But then again, you might not. And what kind of consequences could there be? How's, how's prayer with the Lord? For you going? Do you spend the majority of your time just praying about yourself and asking for blessings? Or do you weep 
over those who are suffering, who need, who don't have strength. How's your reading of scripture? You're justifying your sin, Church of the Living God? Hmm? you justifying it? Trying to glaze it over, make it sweeter? Hmm? You open this book, the Lord's trying to cut you. Maybe that's why you don't read the scriptures as much as you should. Because you know, what are you going to say to you? You know that while you're in sin, justifying it, living it, that um, you're probably not going to get anything too edifying, just more cuts and putrefying sores that you need to deal with. How's your fellowship with the brethren? You do a lot of this. Hey, see this? One, two, three. One point in there. One, two, three. You know, brethren, when you let sin be the deciding factor as the Church of the Living God, and yes, those of the Church of the Living God can do that. We have to, I say this all the time, okay? Contrary to what Calvin said, <clears throat> look, 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 look. You're not being forced by God to do anything. Neither are you being forced by the devil to do anything. You have a free will. Okay? But what are you going to do with that free will? That's the million dollar question. That's the million dollar question there, brethren. Go to Jeremiah now, chapter 5. My favorite book in the entirety of Scripture. Jeremiah chapter 5. We are going to be reading 19 on to verse 31. Jeremiah 5, verses 19 on to 31 to close that down chapter. And it shall come to pass, uh, beginning at verse 19. And it shall come to pass, when ye shall say, Wherefore doeth the Lord our God all these things unto us? Then shalt thou answer them, like as ye have forsaken me, and served strange gods in your land, so that ye serve strangers in a land that is not yours. So shall ye... Uh, let me reread that again. I beg your pardon, brethren. Let's do this over. Sorry. And it shall come to pass when ye shall say, Wherefore doeth the Lord our God all these things unto us? Then shalt thou answer them, Like as ye have forsaken me, and served strange gods in your land, so shall ye serve strangers in a land that is not yours. Declare this to the house of Jacob, and publish it in Judah, saying, Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass it? And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it. But this people hath a revolting and rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Now we got to remember very quickly. Yes, this is in a different dispensation. They were under the law. He's speaking specifically to the Jews. But if you haven't figured it out, they're geniuses. Uh, <laughs> we need a lot of instruction and in righteousness right now. 
getting so close to the catching of what catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Because see, with all the nonsense that's going on, some of us of the Church of the Living God might be thinking of stepping back and compromising in order to get along. Not to get along, but to to just survive. Don't do it. Don't do it. Or you might be using the excuse of you might be being depressed about what's going on out there. And yes, that's a good thing. It is quite possible you are feeling what the Lord is feeling. Yes. But are you going to use that as an excuse to sin? Let's continue. Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God that giveth rain, both the former and the latter in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Now, you tell me something. Verse 25 here. You tell me something. And I know from personal testimonies that uh, right here, verse 25, is a very real consequence that happens unto us today of the Church of the Living God if we get messed up in sin. Hi. Your iniquities have turned away these things. And your sins have withholden good things from you. Chew on that one for a little bit, brother, sisters. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that set a snares. They set a trap. They catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they are become great and waxen rich. They are waxen fat. They shine, yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper. And the right of the needy they do not judge. Don't judge people. Don't judge someone's fruits. I, you know, I forget what day it was. Uh, a brother here locally uh, and I were talking, and his in his family he has a bunch of Jehos, Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, and um, we were talking, and he he's like, "It's not for me to judge him about them being Jehos." And it's like, "Uh, oh, brother." <laughs> It, yeah, it is, according to the scriptures, okay? Yeah, they're Jehos. They're in your family. Yeah, you, you have every right to judge them because you have a perfect standard, the King James scriptures, the real scriptures, okay? <laughs> I was like, brother, what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about, brother? And this is a saved man. Too, uh, of the Church of the Living God. You know. Come on, man. Let's continue. Shall I not visit for these things, said the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end thereof? What will you do in the end thereof? Again, Church of the Living God, you're saved, you're born again, going to heaven when you die. If you're in sin, again, yeah, we all sin. We're going to sin every day, yes. 
Yes, that happens, okay? That happens, yes. Sinless perfection. I'm not even going to get into that because I'm going to put the video for it in the description box. So, so shh, okay? But, are you justifying it? Are you cheapening grace? Are you choosing sin over our Lord, our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ? And the truth of his word, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures. Brethren, I'm going to tell you something. You living in sin, as the church of the living God, one of the most terrifying things you can do is to get in this book, especially if the Lord is on you. Because you ain't going to get anywhere unless, unless you deal with it. Go and confess your sin to the Lord Jesus Christ. Confess to him. Admit to him, yes, I'm in sin, Lord. I've chosen that which you hate over you. And right then, right then and there, brethren, sisters, put that, put that in your head. If you're sitting there justifying your sin, you are choosing what our Lord hates over He who loved you enough. To be crucified on a cross for you and bleed for you that you may be made the righteousness of God in Him. Ah, yeah. Can, can you can you get that through your head? There ain't one sin that's worth it. Hi. Okay, there ain't one sin. It's worth it for you to cling to. That's yeah, tough. There are certain things out there, certain habits some people have. That's tough. But, you know, the next time that you say you're struggling, or rather using that, that you're struggling as a cover, that you're giving in. Picture that. What God hates, you're choosing over the one who loved you, loved you, and died for you. I I don't don't see the comparison. I don't. That's just me. And I'm not calling myself some you know, <laughs> but you have to grasp that, you have to understand that. And I've seen those of the Church of the Living God who were right here with the Lord doing great things. The Lord was doing great things to them. Then they get involved in sin. And they won't let it go. Cling to it. Justify it. Ignore it. Pass it off as a light thing. And they go down just like that. We need to be especially out there today. You're of the Church of the Living God, and you're making light of sin. You you got some issues you need to deal with between you and the Lord. And I'm not talking about these fakes who ain't saved. You're gonna have enough problems at the uh, Great White Throne of Judgment. Okay, have fun storming the castle unless you repent of your self righteousness. You. Let's continue. First Corinthians. Chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11.
1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 19 on to verse 31. Oh, excuse me, verses 23 on the verse 32. I don't know what I was thinking about. <laughs> I was reading the wrong notes. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 on to verse 32. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 on to verse 32. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. This is not uh, transubstantiation. Okay, it's symbolic. Okay. Do this in remembrance of me. You're remembering the Lord. It has no salvific qualities, you disgusting Catholics. You need to get out of Catholicism. But let's continue. And I do have a video where I address this. Uh, I cannot tell you offhand which one it is. So go find it. But let's continue. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This is... This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily. Circle that. Circle that shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. Examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Communion is not salvific. You are remembering the Lord when you do so. It's a it's symbolic, okay? It's not so salvific. And when you have communion, it's a time of reflection. It's a time of examination. A few years ago, when I was a babe, still a babe, I had, um, you know. My wife and I, we do communion every once in a while here at our house by ourselves. And I will take communion by myself every once in a great while, okay? Just to to remember the Lord for what he has done for us, you know, and to thank him, okay? But uh, I do remember when I was a babe, I had, um, I had a, I was in sin still, you know, I was, you know, justifying my sin and I had a, I had communion Immediately, I got sick, fluey kind of stuff. It can happen, but see, unworthily. And then we're told here in verse twenty-eight: "Let a man examine himself." Verse twenty-nine: "For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily." Eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. If you are living in sin, justifying your sin, Church of the Living God, and then you want to go, you want to go and do works for the Lord, or to have communion with the Church of the Living God, 
and to partake of this. What does it say here? Verse 30. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Has it ever crossed your mind, if, you know, speaking out of the church of the living God, who are justifying their sins? Save my brothers and sisters. Going to be in heaven when you die. Okay? Yes. Sealed. But your life is a mess right now. Have you ever considered maybe why you may be weak and sickly, and many of you sleep, not being used to the Lord, why everything seems to go to dung when you touch it? Have you ever considered maybe you have left your first love and have chosen what he hates over him? Is your attitude light on sin or do you hate it? Hi, I hate it. Especially mine own. Especially mine own. Pride. I struggle, truly struggle with pride. But see, I, I have a threshing instrument. Her name is Susan. <laughs> I also have beloved brethren who, because they love me, will correct me. They'll be like, oh, hey, Brad, Brad, Brad. But note this, okay? Verse 28, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Verses 31 and verse 32, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. How do you examine yourself? Seriously. And this is why some of you aren't in the scriptures. Second Corinthians chapter 13. Second Corinthians chapter 13. Verses 5 on to verse 10. Second Corinthians chapter 13 verses 5 on on to verse 10. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you? Except ye be reprobates. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak, and ye are strong, and this also we wish, even your perfection. Therefore I write these things being absent, lest being present, I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification and not to destruction. Not to destruction. No truly saved, born again, part of the church of the living God wants to rebuke someone. If they do, then you got to really question if they're really eager to start rebuking people left and right. When there's cause, of course, according to scripture, yes. But when they're just that quick, just looking for something to catch somebody on, you got to be careful. Because usually that's a sign of someone trying to hide something in themselves by getting on someone else. Yeah. Yeah, but how do you examine yourselves? 
Psalm 119. Psalm 119. And remember about Psalms? The Psalms there, brethren? The Psalms don't have what? Chapters. That's right. Psalm 119. Beth. Psalm 119, Beth. What are you talking about, Brad? Uh, that's verses 9 on to verse 16. Psalm 119, Beth, verses 9 on to verse 16. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee. O let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies, as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts, and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statute. I will not forget thy word. And what happens when you're in sin? Justifying it, living it, pretending that it's not there. What happens? You sometimes tend to forget his word, don't you? Don't you? Too busy. I don't feel like reading scripture today. Yeah. Yeah. Psalm 119. Deleth. That is verses 25 on to verse 32. Up uh, very quickly. See? See that? See that right there? Right there. See that? That's what I refer to whenever uh, personally I'm in the uh, uh, book of Psalms, Psalm 119. I like to refer to it as Daleth or Beth or Gamal. Okay? Not all set of scriptures has that. Just, just so you know. Okay? But Daleth, verses 25 on the verse 32. My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. I have declared my ways, and thou heardest me. Teach me thy statutes. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Remove from me the way of lying, and grant me thy law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth, Thy judgments have I laid before me. And see, when you get messed up in sin, when you start dabbling in sin and start justifying this, that, and the other thing, what are you choosing? You're choosing sin over the Lord Jesus Christ. That will send a shiver down your spine. I have stuck unto thy testimonies, O Lord. Put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. Now, Tith, verses 65 on to verse 72. Verses 65 on to verse 72. Or teeth, however it's pronounced. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now have I kept thy word. Afflicted. Thou art good, and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. 
The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep the precept, thy precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. In some things give thanks. No, in all things give thanks. Are you thankful for the affliction when you mess up from our Lord, our Father, Jesus Christ? Some of you be like, I just went through a major affliction, Brad. How can I thank him for that? Because that proves that you are of the Lord. See, if you ain't got no chastisement, if you're not being afflicted, when you're in sin and you know it, you, um, you need to do some serious examination of yourself. I was talking to this one brother um, who was weeping, crying, and my heart went out for him. And um, and we went through some scriptures, and, um, and, and I told this dear brother, um, you know, praise the Lord that you're sorry. Because you have offended God. You're crying because of what you've done and how you've fallen and stuff like that. Praise the Lord that you're weeping for that because this brother was sorry that he had offended God. Not the fact, not just the fact of what he had done, but rather that he has had offended God. If that ain't in you, or if you can easily put it away and continue on looking at the pornography, smoking the cigarette, getting drunk, lying, playing video games, putting wicked things before your eyes. And you can easily put it away and act like it's all good. And there's no chastisement. There's no affliction. You really need to um, get on your knees and plant that face of yours in the floor there, man, woman. You, know, you really have some seeking to do, if that be the case. what I'm saying. But on this aff affliction... Go now to Amos, Amos chapter 4, we need a lot of instruction in righteousness this close to the catching weight of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, man. We need it. With all the temptation there is to give in and wear and do all the stupid nonsense. I just learned recently that uh, according to my wife, that what is called phase three, where they're going to shut everything down again and make it far more intense. The second time, you know, the second wave is coming here to Illinois. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the only way that's going to be lifted is when they make mandatory vaccines. Prepare yourselves, brethren, sisters. It's coming. But Amos chapter four. Amos chapter 4, verses 6 on to verse 13. This is for our instruction in righteousness. Pay attention. Church of the living God. If you're lost, I'm going to put one of the salvation videos um, in, the, in the description box, as well as that beautiful one done by our beloved brother, um, Aaron Murphy Deering Judge. Hope I got that right. But I'm going to put one of his in uh, one of his in here, especially. It's one of the best salvation videos I've heard. One of the best. But check this out. 
Amos chapter 4. We will be reading verses 6 on to verse 13. Now remember, different dispensation under the law. They were not sealed. They could lose their salvation. The Holy Ghost can come and go, come and go. Talking specifically to the Jews. This is for our instruction in righteousness. Pay attention. And I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities, no food, and want of bread in all your places. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Oh, excuse me. And also I have withholden the rain from you, when there were yet three months to the harvest, and I caused it to rain upon one city, and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon, and the piece whereupon it rained not withered. So two or three cities wandered onto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have smitten you with blasting and mildew, when your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increased, the palmer worm devoured them. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. Your young men have I slain with the sword and have taken away your horses. And I have made the stink of your camps to come up Unto your nostrils, yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have overthrown some of you, as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and ye were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning, yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. For lo, he that formeth the mountains, and createth the wind, and declareth unto man what is his thought, that maketh the morning darkness, and treadeth upon the high places of the earth, the Lord, the God of hosts, is his name. Look at verse 12. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel, hand them over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, so the spirit may be saved. Verse 6, verse 8, Verse 9, verse 10, verse 11. That's five times. You see, yet have ye not returned unto me. And what does the number five signify? Yeah. Why do we look at this, Brad? Why do you think God did this to his own people, the apple of his eye? And there are some out there because of this dispensation, because uh, judgment isn't executed speedily against an evil work. I just paraphrased that and butchered that, even though we read it. Beg your pardon. That's in Ecclesiastes, what is Zach chapter 8? Go find it again in reference to yourself. Okay? They seem to think, oh, well, I got away with that. I can get away with anything. Oh, it's all about grace. It's uh, Grace covers it all. Yes, yes, yes. Make grace so cheap. <laughs> we see here, through the example given to us through the scripture that God took away their food, okay, took away their ability to get food by making it rain on only one place, 
okay, gave them sickness, you know, blasted them with mildew, and struck their provisions again. And also we see pestilence, okay? And for all that, and also here, how he overthrew some of them, and for all that, they didn't turn on to the Lord, but went away further. You know, when things are happening to you like this, Church of the Living God, and even you lost people, you need to be like, whoa, stop. Get down on your knees, put that you know, your favorite face on the carpet or on the hardwood floor, or on the concrete, whatever it is. Lord, what am I doing? What, what? And if you do know, and you see all this happening, what in the wide world of sports entertainment are you waiting for? What, what? What is it with you? What is it with you? You got to hold on to that sin so long? Is it that precious to you? What is it with you? I don't know. I don't know, man. Haggai. The book of the prophecy of Haggai. Chapter 1. We will be reading verses 3 on to verse 11. Okay? Haggai chapter 1, verses 3 on to verse 11. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Ye have so much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Think about an addiction you might be struggling with, or not struggling with, whatever. Earning wages to put them into a bag with holes. Sipping a little. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood, and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. For our instruction in righteousness, you, the church of the living God, you are saved, and you are dabbling in sin, messing around with it. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. Okay? Go to the Lord in prayer. Get it right with Him right now and put that thing that you claim to be struggling with or legitimately struggling with, get it away from you. What are you going to be caught doing when you're caught up? Huh? Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts? Because mine house, because mine house that is waste, 
and ye run every man unto his own house. Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Brethren. Sisters. Now I know there are some of you out there who aren't str legitimately struggling with sin. And I know there are some of you out there who uh, are in sin. But hiding it. By saying, I struggle with it. Consider your ways. Please, please consider your ways. For hey, I don't know what you're going through. You don't know what I'm going through. But here's the thing too, you got to remember, keep this in mind. When we up there at the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to know the things that you don't know about me. And I'm going to know the things that I don't know about you. And I think, brethren, when we get up there at the judgment seat of Christ, while we are cowering in great fear at the judgment seat of Christ, fear, okay, um, we're going to see some stuff of one another that we don't want each other to see. Let us all consider our ways. Right now, because the time is really getting short, brethren. So, it's going to be it for this video. Um, I have another video. Um, Oh boy, I got another video, but I'm going to chill for a little bit and take a break. Got to take Xena out. I hope, my hope is that the Lord be glorified to anything that I, a sinner who is chief, has have done. There are those of you out there, my brothers, it ought to be you doing this, not me. There are those of you, my brothers, far better than I ever have been or ever will be. And I love you. Let's consider our ways. Let's consider our ways. Before it's too late. Because like I said, once we're up there at the judgment seat of Christ, cowering in fear... You're going to know the things you don't know about me. And I'm going to know the things about you that I don't know about you. We're still going to, we're still going to, we're saved. We're still going to go to heaven. Is that what we want? You know, to have to see those things. We get, for example, let's say we get caught up, and um, standing at the judgment seat of Christ, and the Lord is showing. And I believe that, of course, that's the way it's going to be. Uh, and the Lord is, and we're seeing, you're seeing, what you don't see. Whoa. And then who's before me? I'm seeing of you that I don't see. Oh. Oh boy, Lord. <laughs> you 
You get my point, don't you? Good. I love you. I'm going to take a little break. Put Zena out, and then I'm going to make another video. So, see you in the next one. I love you. Bye-bye-bye-bye.